Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give of all praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Pray that the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth. So to get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. We're going to be getting into a couple things. This morning, the Most High woke me up and reminded me of a verse, a couple of verses in Enoch. We need to get some clarification because as these other nations realize and are admitting that the plagues are now have been released, they're now running back to Caesarea. Today we're going to talk about Caesarea and what he's meant to these other nations. He's been good times Jesus. He's been this Jesus right here. He's been the, um, the good times Jesus that has allowed all the Gentiles to party it up. He's been the good times Jesus that has allowed them to think that Jesus only brings good things. He's only responsible for bringing good things. But see, this Jesus right here, the one that uh, the vast majority of the world is still waiting to come and save them, I said, has destroyed our family. Just by watching this show, especially this episode right here, when just like how it works with us, when we try to bring the family the truth, they don't want to hear it. They're content with what good times Jesus has done to our to our whole uh, society of Hebrews. It's pretty much uh, destroyed the family structure. Good times Jesus has uh, elevated the woman above the man, made the men weak and docile, reversed the roles of the uh, sons and daughters, and has pretty much destroyed our people. Has made it so that our people won't read, don't read anything else about sports, Stuff for college is going to be a bunch of lies they're going to teach you. You know, they'll, you'll, you'll pretty much waste time reading about that. But you won't waste any time learning about your own history. Learning about the lies that you've been taught. That's something that's very taboo in our society. But see, the other nations have had, you know, good times, Jesus, to pretty much provide absolutely everything for them. A life of luxury, a life, uh, you know, of leisure time, you know, and the thing is, is that the Most High was going to definitely um, make people have to pay for all this extra time that they were going to get, but um, that's what the world doesn't want to believe. They don't want to believe that they're going to have to pay for all this leisure time. They believe only in good times, Jesus. They don't believe in bad times, Jesus. Now, I'm going to play a little clip because uh, True News is bringing out some information. And see, what's happening right now is that the good times that people have been, uh, you know, let the good times roll, enjoying life. They thought they were going to be able to do that all the way to the end. And then when the bad times start to hit, say good times, Jesus, and he's just going to rapture me off. True News um, said they got they bring in some really good information, but just like most of these people, they bring good news as far as like the news is going on, stuff like that. But then, you know, they try to, to just throw a little Jesus action in there. You know, like, yeah, things suck. Things are getting really, really bad. But hey, as long as you just claim that Psalms 91, you'll be good. You know, I, I was just cracking up because they're actually talking about that even on this one. I mean, you know. Anytime these guys want us to bring the news, that's cool. I think you guys should just continue with just bringing the news. As soon as you guys try to get into the whole religious aspect, you guys have been shown to be wanting in so many areas. And good times Jesus is not going to save you. Good times Jesus is not going to give you the opportunity to claim Psalms 91. See, Most High gets to dictate who he's going to cover. You don't get to... Um, choose if he's going to cover you. And that's what's funny now is because people are like, I saw people even talk about it in the description boxes of some of these, um, of some of these videos, like, Hey, I saw you claiming that Psalms 91 
you know, that's, that's, that's right, brother. You know, if you claim it, he's, he's going to be, you know, true to make sure that he follows through and, and, and protects you. I'm like, where? You see, you guys are using our books again. And I'm going to show you some books that you guys have been hiding. And now you're going to see exactly why it is that they hid these books. Because they give much clarity and much understanding of the things that are actually in the Bible. But even what you're going to see here is um, you're going to see them giving some information, talking about the Bible real fast. There's a couple of minute clip he's going to listen to. And then how he talks about how all of a sudden at the end, his remedy to this situation is coming on the earth. So they see the fact that, you know, Armageddon is here. Judgment is here. Now they're going to try to give you the, uh, the breakdown as to how you can get saved through all this. See, they only know about good times, Jesus. They're not, you know, looking out for, hey, you know what? We've had a good run and we're going to have to pay. You don't hear that from them. But you're going to hear how he's going to admit that a lot of these pastors have been lying to these people. But see, after they admit that they've been lying, then they still want to maintain their position at the top to be able to lead you. And I said, it doesn't work like that. You don't get to admit that you guys have been lying. Your group's been lying. The Christian church has been lying. But then you get to continue to lead the nation. It doesn't work like that. We're not going to give you brownie points for finally admitting the truth. Finally admit the fact that you guys have been lying. Once you realize that you, you, know, you don't have the truth, you need to just go put that Bible down and go sit in the corner and let the real men do the work. Let's listen real quick. This is from um, True News. It's a video they did today talking about contaminated luggage. Uh, are U.S. airports employees infected with coronavirus? This is just towards the end of the last like seven to ten minutes of the video, though. Make sure I have it nice and loud so you guys can hear it, okay? Real proud kids. And you might be down to your last pancake in your life. When you're looking out your window in your home and you see... Pirates and men being in thrown. hazmat suits taking your neighbor's family out in bags. Mm. Your next door neighbor. Yes. That's what we're talking <clears throat> about. That's when you know if you believe God's word, if your trust is in the Lord. When it gets to that point that you st- you say this plague will not c- will not come nigh me heard the word of the Lord. Yes. yes. I am going to put all my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. <laughs> See, a lot of people have been going to prophecy conferences for years and buying prophecy books and, and mm. talking about the rapture and all that stuff, but they haven't prepared their heart for the tribulation. They haven't prepared for the plague conference. That's right. They didn't go to the plague conference because they went to the rapture conference and they heard a preacher tell them, you don't have to worry about these things because you're going to be raptured and taken away. And all these things are going to happen after the rapture. No, that was a lie. It was a lie. The tribulation is upon us. The days of woe are here. Yes. And now we're going to find out who really has the word in his or her heart. We're going to find out who really trusts Almighty God, who has faith in Him. That's what we're going to find out in the days ahead. This is a good time, 2020. This is a good time for you to start reading the Bible. When was the last time you read the New Covenant? Here. Read the. Here we go. So we, hey, you know, give a little information, and then we just veer off to the left, exit stage left. When was the last time you read the New Covenant? So just not even worry about the Old Testament. Let's not worry about any other books that we've read, you know, that we've hidden from you guys. Just go read the New Testament. You see that? You see, this is what happens when they give you some truth, and they mix it in with some lies. Let's continue a little bit more here. New Covenant. Start tonight. Open up the New Covenant at Matthew and start reading. It is time. When's the last time you've read the entire New Covenant? Cherish the Word of God. You know, right. a lot of the Bibles. If you really mean... Yeah, that was enough of that. So their remedy is, hey, just read the New Covenant because the New Covenant is for everyone, which it doesn't say that anywhere in the Scriptures. 
we already know the new covenant is going to be established once we are returned back into our land. Talk about that in Baruch. But of course, other ones aren't going to know that because they've hidden all this information. Now, let me get to what the Most High wanted me to share with you guys. You know, good times Jesus has already given the world their blessing. He's already given them grace and mercy. <laughs> They've already had their grace and mercy and they want ours as well. The Most High led me to read this for you, with you guys today. This is Enoch 88. And see, this is why they're saying things like, well, we don't accept Enoch. Yeah, we don't care what you accept. Because at this point, you guys have now gotten rid of the Apocrypha. You guys have gotten, right, gotten rid of the Old Testament. You've gotten rid of now all these other books. You've gotten rid of the second stick. And now you're just telling people just to read the New Testament, the New Covenant, which nowhere in there does it say that he made a new covenant with Gentiles. So the days will come, he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel, but they just kind of skip all that part. This is what happens when Gentiles get our books. This right here is the example of what was happening in the spirit world when all of the other nations, as well as these Hebrews that have been aligning themselves with them, have, have already gotten their grace and mercy. Now, and if you remember the story of the 70 shepherds, the 70 shepherds breaks it down and it pretty much explains everything. The whole world, we were given to the whole world because of us falling off. Most High says he's going to give us to the 70 shepherds, but they can, we're supposed to only kill the ones the Most High had already said that they could kill. So they needed to follow the rules and regulations that he'd already set up. They did not. So they decided to kill. They were going to kill. They ended up killing way more than they were supposed to. And they were, you know, doing things they were not supposed to do. Now, this is what was happening in the spirit world. The angels were writing down everything, taking the reports up to the Most High. And the Most High could have done whatever he wanted. He could have started bringing judgment to the other nations, but he didn't. He gave the other nations grace and mercy for a time. And that's what you're going to see right here. This is look at uh, Enoch 88, 115. Moreover, also, all the sheep were blind and could not see as were the shepherds likewise. Thus were they delivered up to the shepherds for a great destruction who trod them underfoot and devoured them. Okay. So the whole world is giving credit and praise to good times Jesus while they trotted us under their foot and they devoured us. Yet was their Adonai silent until all the sheep in the field were destroyed. So the Most High was silent. He gave you your grace. Okay? He gave the, all you nations here your grace. Right here. The grace and mercy of the Most High, he already gave you for the last 500 years, and even before that when the other nations had our people in captivity. But we're just going to right now in the last 500 years. Here's your grace and mercy that you guys got. Not only did you not give our power the credit for giving you guys your opportunity to have us under your foot, you made up another God. You made up good times Jesus so that you could give him praise for what happened to our people. Okay, so let's continue. Again, yet was there Adonai silent until all the sheep in the field were destroyed. The shepherds and the sheep were all mixed together. But they did not save them from the powers of the beast. Power of the beast. So again, we're all mixed together, just like today. Then he wrote the sefer and ascended, exhibited, and read it at the residence of Yahweh of the sheep. So these angels were going up there as they wrote everything down, reading it to the Most High, showing him what, what was going on to the people. Okay? He petitioned him for them and prayed, pointed out every act of the shepherds. So this angel's up there praying, protesting, petitioning the Most High to do something, to intervene. He did not. He allowed the other nations to have their what? Grace and mercy. You're going to understand this when we start reading other scriptures in a minute, how this all works out. And that's why uh, it all connects, which is why these books have been hidden. Okay? Then, taking the sefer, 
he deposited it with him and departed. So the angel's been here telling the Most High, petitioning him, showing him what's been happening, and the Most High was silent. Because the other nations, or it was the times of the Gentiles, they were getting their grace and mercy. Understand? So you other nations who keep on talking about how, you know, I'm going to get my Psalms 91 coverage right now, you're fooling yourself because you already got it because we keep coming back and regenerating everything else. You guys already got that when you came over to the fourth part and the Most High unloaded these plagues on us. That's how you guys could walk into all the, our cities, all, you know, our, into our land and destroy us because the Most High unleashed these plagues on us. He gave you your Psalms 91 coverage 500 years ago. Now the plagues are showing back up again. And now you seem to think you're going to get Psalms 91 coverage again. Only all you have to do is just claim it. Well, good times Jesus, yes. If good times Jesus existed, that would probably be okay. But good times Jesus was just set up to destroy our people and keep us at the bottom and destroy our families. And that's what good times Jesus has been a great, has been great at. So you guys could live and not think about all the destruction that we've gone through. And you can live in La La Land for the last 500 plus years. Now, knowing this from Enoch, when you start reading things like this from Psalms 50, it's going to start to make a lot more sense because now you're going to, you got a glimpse of what was happening in the spirit world. Okay. Let's see here. Um, let's go to uh, Psalms 50 and 20. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such at one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. That part in 21 should have hit home perfectly from what you just read in Enoch. These things that they were doing to us, how they were destroying us, lying about us, lying about who we are, lying about our lands. He's, they've been doing all this, these things. The angels have been going up and reporting to the Most High. And what, what was he doing in Enoch? He kept silent. What does it say right here? Right here? And I kept silence. Most High didn't say a thing. Let you guys believe whatever it was you guys wanted to believe. You guys want to believe that good times Jesus was the one that was giving you guys all the perks here? So be it. He, you guys have good times, Jesus, and you now believe that he's going to take you away. And if he doesn't take you away and rapture away, like you guys have been saying, that he's just going to give you that Psalms 91 coverage, and then uh, the angels are going to protect you. But what does it say right here? Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. You thought good times, Jesus, was the real power. You thought he was the real, right? Yahweh Shai. He said, yeah, uh -uh. that's not who I am. That's something you guys made up in your figment imagination. That's good times, Jesus. He ain't good times, Jesus. But he, what is he going to do? But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So as these plagues are now coming, you're going to realize, like, like the guy was saying from True News, now you're going to see who really has the truth, who really has the faith. Is it in good times, Jesus? And anybody just wants to pick up our books and say, no, you guys can't read this. No, this book's not good. These books aren't good. No, these weren't good. You know, and pretty much you got to go to my church and then, um, you know, and then I'll give you the truth. Or is it the people in the Bible that says that he's only showed these words unto Jacob? And that these are the people of the book. And these are the people he made a covenant with. And these are the people you're supposed to cleave to. Now it's going to be. Now people are going to have to see, you know, Mosai is going to show out and let you know who he's really dealing with and who he's not dealing with. But that 21 should be perfect. That breaks it down perfectly. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. You were doing all these things to us, and the Most High was silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. You thought that, you know, white Jesus was the real deal. That's what you guys thought. You know, all right? All right? Such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before the night. So he's going to set us in order before their eyes. 
This is another book that was hidden. I read it because it says one of my favorite. You know, a few verses here. Second Baruch 13. You know, and it's, it's so applicable to what's happening today. Because now that these uh, Most High has pretty much, like I said, hey, the guy was saying, the plagues have been released. Armageddon is here. Destruction is here. They see it. But they don't get it, the fact that this, who is the Most High is coming to save his people. Not anybody, or not anybody just claims good times Jesus. Not the Jesus that was used to destroy our nation. You think Most High is coming to save people that believe in that? Let's take a, uh, this is Second Baruch. This is all out of the sea for, okay? 13, we'll start at 4. So that if ever those prosperous cities say, why has El Elohim brought upon us this retribution? Why is he bringing these plagues on us? What do we do? We believed in, in good times, Jesus. We went to Christmas. We did Easter. We went to Sunday. We've been eating that ham, eating that bacon. We haven't been following his commandments because we didn't have to. So why would he be upset with us? Why would he bring in plagues? That's what they're thinking right now. Because they don't read. Reading is fundamental. You need to read with some comprehension skills. Again, so that if ever those prosperous cities say, why has El Elohim brought upon us this retribution? So now they're starting to think, why, why would they be bringing, why would he be bringing stuff like that? He loves us. He loves everybody. Say unto them, you and those like you who shall have seen this evil, this is the evil and retribution which is coming upon you and upon your people in its destined time, that the nations may be thoroughly smitten. So he's bringing death and destruction to smite the nations. And then they shall be in anguish. And if they say at that time, for how long? You will say to them, ye who have drunk the strained wine, drink ye also of its dregs, the judgment of the lofty one who has no respect of persons. So you guys don't get to have good times, Jesus, and have all the good times for the last 500 years, and then get to be, be whisked away or get, then get to be um, protected. That's not what the most, that's what this is telling you right here. And this is exactly why these books are hidden. Because in their whole, um, you know, breakdown of the Bible and, you know, we get to have good times all your whole life. And then at the end, when things might get bad or things might start getting, you know, going south, he's just going to either take you away or protect you. That's not, that's not this. That's not what's happening right now. So, you know, right here, judgment of the lofty one who has no respect of persons. On this account, he had aforetime no mercy on his own sons, but afflicted them as his enemies because they sinned. So he's been destroying us because we sinned. So you guys have been making fun and, you know, acting like, well, ah, you know, these people ain't nothing. You know, I said, we don't need to listen to them. They don't know anything. Yeah, okay, well, you keep believing that. I said, because now... Destruction is here. The plagues are here. And they're not turning away. All right. Then, therefore, were they chastened that they might be sanctified. So we were chastened so that at the end we could be sanctified. So the ones that the Most High is about to sanctify are his people who have been chastened. If your people have not been going through the chastening of the Most High, then the, the, what's coming, you know, the, the mercy that's coming isn't for you. You already received your mercy. All right. But now ye peoples and nations, ye are guilty because ye have always trodden down the earth and used the creation unrighteously. So just take a look at who's been trodden down the earth and using creation unrighteously. It hasn't been us Brews. Us Hebrews have been at the bottom. We've had no power to do any of this. All we do, all we've had time, all the things we've been able to do is take this ass whooping that we were given. That's all we've been able to do. So we've been at the bottom. Other nations have been mocking us, making fun of us and everything else. But the Most High is about to restore his people and restore the ones that are cleaving to his people, the ones that he's called. You don't get to choose him. He chooses you. For I have always benefited you, and ye have always been ungrateful for the beneficence. So the Most High has favored you Gentiles for the, for, during the time of the Gentiles. And you guys have been ungrateful for the beneficence. You haven't even acknowledged the real power. 
you've acknowledged good times Jesus. So you think he's going to be uh, happy with you? Nah, not at all. But so you start bringing these scriptures together. So the ones most high has given me to bring to you guys, it starts to bring a lot more clarification. It's one of the last ones I'm going to bring in right now is this one. Right now, you don't even see why Wisdom of Solomon isn't really talked about. I went to a funeral, and it was kind of crazy because they were quoting some things from Wisdom of Solomon. But what they would do is they would just read a little bit and then kind of skip certain parts. You know, I said, because you, you can't be reading this, you know, with grit, with good understanding of the scriptures. Because like you said, it just pretty much destroys all these religious, you know, dogmas. We're going to take a look at Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 15. This the people saw and understood it not. See, the other nations are not understanding the fact that grace and mercy is not for everyone. Let's go again. This the people saw and understood it not. Neither laid they up this in their minds, that his grace and mercy is with his saints, and that he hath respect unto his chosen. So grace and mercy, mercy is to his saints, the most high's chosen people. He respects, he has respect to the people he's chosen. And that's, and that's exactly what you're seeing right now. The other nations, they can't even put it in their minds that the Most High would have a chosen people. And that grace and mercy is given to those chosen people. Because the rest of the world thinks that grace and mercy is for everyone. And that's exactly what you're seeing right now. As you're seeing these plagues coming, as you're seeing the numbers of how many people are being affected, the deaths, you're starting to see that this stuff is real and this stuff is close. Now people are like, I, I want that grace and mercy too. But they haven't done anything for the Father. They've been too busy living for themselves and living for the things of this life. And when they have had the opportunity to hear the truth, they just pretty much run away from it because they, you know, they're too busy trying to make money. But see, now with this uh, plague going over there in, um, in China, it's pretty much grinding everything to a halt. Companies can't make money if they can't get their supplies from China. China, you know, supplies so many different things. So it's gonna, the tentacles are going to, you know, definitely grind to a halt so many different things, just like the scriptures talks about. Now everything is just going to grind to a halt. All the businesses and everything, all the opportunities to make money, it's gonna quickly come to an end. And then everyone's going to be, it's going to be about what you've done for the most high. Now, if you spent your whole life and it's been nothing about money, then what have you done for the Father? You see? But the vast majority of the world is going to see real quick that the Most High only, he chose the people that he's chosen to be able to gain, he gave them the opportunity to do things for him in order to build up treasure, you know, by following the Father, doing things for the Father, right? Now the other nations are going to have time. They're going to talk about how these people are going to be getting, uh, all these other nations are getting uh, pretty much put in their homes quarantining them you have a whole lot of time to think if you get quarantined aren't you if you can't go to work you can't make any money you're going to be home and just like the guy said in the video in the video when's the last time you've read the bible when's the last time you've you know you spent time with the most high and what is it but then they kind of go off with oh well just read the new testament because you start reading the other stuff you're gonna to start to realize real quick you start listening to some real hebrews and some people who actually know the scriptures you're gonna realize real quick this is talking about a certain people. It's not talking about everyone. And people are going to be getting a whole lot of downtime real soon. And they're going to be uh, figuring out, uh, you're going to be trying to read that Bible, try to get that word, and they're not going to be able to get it. They've been too stuck with good times, Jesus. And you realize real quick, good times, Jesus, ain't it. Good times, Jesus has been doing nothing but lying to you. Good times, Jesus was only good when you everything was working and you were able to make money and you were able to live, you know, doing the things that good times Jesus wants you to do. But you're going to see real soon, that ain't true. Whole world's going to see real soon that this is true. This has been nothing but BS the whole time. And it has destroyed our families, destroyed, you know, everything. Our belief system with good times Jesus right here. 
just wanted to bring this to you. I said, Most High gave this to me this morning, along with other things. He was kind of putting putting it together. So I wanted to just bring this video to you guys real quick. So now when you sit there and hear these guys start trying to bring up Jesus now and how, you know, you just got to pray, pray to Jesus. He's going to save you or, or Psalms 91 is going to cover you. Man, please put the Bible down. It's not your book anyways. What you need to do is get on your knees, acknowledge the truth and chase after the most high as best you can with what little time you have right now. Start listening to the real men that the Most High has brought up. I said, because because uh, that's pretty much your only hope at this point. If you're still stuck on good times, Jesus, but well, you already know what your end's going to be. It's going to be exactly the same thing that happened to us when we were following the wrong power. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.